Okay, so we'll go ahead and kick it off. Um, again, I'd like to make this interactive. So if there's any questions or topics you wanted to cover that maybe we didn't cover, um, please ask those questions. We'd love to kind of have that as a discussion here. So where we're seeing kind of in the modern you know, MES uh, family, as far as where food and beverage, you know, struggles today, um, we see in kind of three categories today. We see quality control and compliance, production efficiency, and traceability and genealogy. And we'll kind of hit these three topics um, and kind of show a demo of where we kind of help with these particular topics. Um, starting with quality control and compliance, you know, adhering to product specifications has always been important, um, certainly is more important these days, uh, certainly with quality of control and recalls that we keep seeing. Um, the desire to avoid drifting out of tolerances as, you know, customers may just reject your product based upon color. You know, if the potato chip is the wrong color, you could potentially get a return back. And then, of course, you know, the all important uh, weight of the package. We can uh, we want to reduce the amount of giveaway we have. Um, but of course, we can never go below what our package says so that we don't get sued. So, you know, these are certainly things that are always been important to us. And this is where an MES can help to identify um, how well are you adhering to uh, your specifications? And then as you drift to kind of identify why you're drifting. Um, proper procedures are also a key thing. We've always seen, you know, changeover as a key thing in this industry. Um, you want to minimize that, but also ensure quality. I remember in a pet food manufacturer when they went from plastic bags to paper bags because paper bags are more recyclable, but it created a lot of more uh, points on the line that they had a lot more setup and more possibilities for failure. So again, their change over time went up quite a bit and they worked you know, heavily to kind of reduce that and minimize that. Um, you'll notice on every topic here, we also you know, have the ability to effectively perform analytics. Um, you know, we always talk about analytics and certainly there's a lot of potential there, but without these core things, without good changeover data, without good data to do the quality analysis on, there's really no point. The analytics are just going to be garbage in, garbage out. Um, the second item, production efficiency, you know, certainly we've fortunate that some of our food manufacturers are running at their maximum capacity and the more they can make, the more they can sell. So certainly we don't want to lose any of that. And Anywhere we have areas of loss, then we have to kind of deal with it, whether it's sending more to the feed pile or whatever that might be. You know, it's certainly, you know, more problematic for us if we have to, you know, deal with more waste. So the idea is we want to go ahead and identify those and minimize those areas. Schedule adherence is, is really critical in the food and beverage and CPG manufacturers. Certainly the Walmarts and all of the big box stores of the world will be shipping trucks to us to bring our product to their distribution centers. And again, if we're gonna miss the schedule and miss where that truck comes from, it just creates chaos in the entire supply chain. So we can look at schedule adherence and how we can kind of keep on schedule with a couple of different options there. One thing a lot of customers don't really consider is the the effect of micro downtimes. You know, we always tend to look at downtimes over two minutes, but if a downtime continuously occurs, you know, dozens and dozens of times a shift, that that micro downtime can add up to significant amount of time. So it's it is worth investigating, and sometimes there's simple fixes in those. Um, the last item I'll cover is uh, traceability and genealogy. There's there's certainly a lot more um, interest, certainly around mock recalls. You want to be able to kind of tighten those recalls and do them as quickly as possible, hopefully avoiding them altogether, which is kind of part of that third item there where we have holds based upon raw materials so that if we do discover something in the lab saying that this raw material is bad, we want to be able to stop that before it goes any farther in the process. And, and MES can certainly help on that. Um, a big thing is also variation in as we use more natural products as the customer demands more organics and natural products, which are not as tight in their <laughs> specifications when they come to us. You know, we have to accept what Mother Nature gives us. So this can be helpful to kind of look at, okay, based upon either sugar or other contents, let's go ahead and tighten up the recipe to make sure that we still have the products expected on the other on the other side, um, as well as positive release. You know, we want to make sure all your microbiologicals and all the other tests are done before we do release. You know, having a single screen to kind of do that. That's something yeah. MES can help with. Um, any questions so far?
If not, I'll turn it over to Lulu to go ahead and talk a little bit about the quality control and compliance part, and then I'll come back with the efficiency and traceability. Okay, so Lulu, if you want to go ahead and take over the screen. If I'm not muted, it usually helps. <laughs> yes. All right, you should be able to see my screen. And basically, we're now going to go a little bit uh, deeper into the three topics that Dave just introduced. And the first one is quality control and compliance. As he mentioned, obviously, the more you can produce right the first time, the better. And that's how we can help, right? Be able to, in real time, allow users to, for example, like you can see here at the top right, see alarming based on different conditions um, and focus on the process quality analysis and control. Um, you can have, you know, obviously those specifications that these alarms will be triggered based off um, and KPIs and all of this visible through dashboards. Now, um, the idea is this will enable the users to have lower production waste, scrap, recall cost, and this is tightly tied together with uh, when we're talking about traceability and genealogy and the recalls also that Dave was mentioning. The way that um, we do this is through the use of variables. So, you know, it could be a beer company and milk company, depending on what your product is. Uh, there's different variables that you want to keep an eye on uh, regarding your process. And the good thing about the software is you're able to have different types of inputs. For example, you can have automatic input, right? Something that comes from your machine, such as speed, temperature, and you can see the values in here. And to the right, you can see that we have added um, some lower and upper warning some recheck values and targets. This is what will enable us together with given specifications um, to alarm on. We can have some manual input in the same display. So let's say a user needs to grab uh, some information. It could be um, text, it could be a numeric, it could be um, a specific uh, values that we want the user to select from. And like I mentioned, we have the limits to the right. In this case, you're viewing them as uh, in numeric form, but very easily you can view them um, in a graph format. Now, these variables can be shown in a couple different ways. One of them is what we call auto log. Uh, and basically, if you're familiar with the old um, thick client, it's a um, very, very similar look and feel to that. Um, you have columns that are stopped. As an example, you can have a test that you run every 30 minutes. Then every 30 minutes, you will have a new column where you can have these values coming automatically or add them manually or a combination of both. Um, you can see different information regarding, in this case, um, the event and regarding the variables associated to that event as well. You can see also in here, top of right navigation, um, if you click in any of these values, there's additional information and graphs that you can get based on that data. You can see also to the left in here, there's depending on the um, displays that you have configured, the ones that you can access. Now, another way to view these uh, variables, like we mentioned, it, one was auto log, would be what we call activities. But in essence, it's just another way to visualize it. In this case, what you see is um, same things that I mentioned about the variables, right? This is, for example, the other way to view the data that's non numeric. Here you see the values. You have a drop down in this case, and a great thing you have very quickly, let's say you have something that's um, not meeting your requirements, you can create a non-conformance. Now, in doing that, you um, 
based on the variables. You can see in here, this would be how you would see those values. And this would be the non-conformance. So you're capturing what's out of specification, you're capturing the actual value, and you're capturing what your target, desired target was, what your lower and uppers were. And another great thing is if you want to add more information than this, you can um, add, for example, an image, you can add files, um, you can add video, you can you know, write up a paragraph uh, describing all of these things would be stored um, together with this information of the non-conformance. There's SPC trending, again, uh, through variables that are configured to have this capability. And based on that uh, configuration, you're going to provide details regarding certain rules, regarding the type of graph, um, and you have the control limits auto-generated based on the last um, in, so whatever you decide sample values. Uh, and also you have alarm tooltip for the variables that do have alarms. And you can see, for example, in this case, we have the variables to the left, and you can see your X bar um, to the right. And you can see the tooltip in here with some uh, quick information on the data that you're trying to analyze. Speaking to that overall topic, I would say of quality, it's just great to be able to catch certain um, variances that you are seeing that are not expected before they become an issue. And that's what SPC would be really good for. Another thing that we hear a lot about um, is the need for electronic signatures. You have the capability of adding this as part of as an additional variable. And um, the idea here is you can configure one or two levels. So let's say it could be your operator or it could be an operator and a supervisor, and they're going to use their logins to the system. They're going to be um, added to these available verifiers and they're going to be able to note that this is an electronic signature due to the um, the symbol of the pen. So you just click on that. You're going to have this pop-up open up to the right of the screen. You're going to click on Authenticate Performer. One or two may be available depending on the configuration. Like I said, if you're using one or two levels. And then you have a couple of options. You can click Approve. Um, and as you can see in here, also you could have reasons to add in comments as well in here. But you also have an option if you wanted to sign later to just click this button and you're going to see this symbol up here highlighted. And you can just maybe come in and do a few of them at a time. Another great thing um, regarding this to be able to further look into quality and analyzing data is what we call process analyzer. And the great thing about this is you can see in here basically um, that you have the ability to compare data not just with the batches, and this would be what the batch data would look like on this dashboard, but also to compare the uh, values for history and tags, uh, planups variables, and planups KPIs, and even, of course, golden batches. So let's say you had a batch that was as close as you can think to your ideal. You can see very quickly um, how another batch that you're having issues with differs from that one. And in here, for example, you can see comparison of values and in this one comparison as well. Any questions? Okay, I'll give control back to you. Okay, so thank you, Lulu. Um, as I mentioned, oh, I'm going to share my screen. Did not click over. All right, there we go. Uh, does everyone see the PowerPoint production efficiency now? Yep, you're up. Perfect. Okay. So as Lulu, Lulu talked about quality, we also want to be able to kind of produce at scale. Certainly, we want to be able to continue to produce products and, and meet schedules. And our efficiency module gives you that capability. So it can track either downtime, scrap, schedule adherence. It can do that all automatically. 
as much as we can get from the diagnostics of the PLC, it can do it semi-automatically where maybe we know the machine just went down, but we can have the supervisors kind of add in the information or fully manual. If there's no automation at this particular point, you could, maybe you intend to add that later, you could start with the manual screens entering in the data. And then as you update your control system, you can uh, go ahead and start taking advantage of that. So anywhere on that spectrum, uh, we have capacity to do that and then generate reports to go ahead and take a look at OEE for the lines. And that includes uh, basically all the quality, so any scrap events we have, production. Uh, one of the things that's constantly kind of left out is, are we running the line slower than it should be run? Because if you've been promised to run at a certain speed and you're not getting there, why are you not getting there? So we want to be able to count that and identify what the slowness is, as well as, of course, traditional downtime. When the machine goes down, obviously we're not producing anything. So we want to be able to track all of those capabilities. So we do have web dashboards to do that. And I'll go ahead and navigate to our demo system here. So these web dashboards allow us to kind of identify what is my worst performing line, which is what I'm seeing at the top here. And then as we continue down here, we see the additional lines, the better performing lines that come into play. And then each of these provide us the ability to drill into that. So if I see availability as more of my issue, I can go ahead and click on that. And now I'll start to see categorizations, um, breakdowns by what we call a reason tree. So a reason tree gives us kind of multiple levels of categorization. You may start with an electrical, a safety, a mechanical type issue, and then you can kind of drill into it from there. Um, and then here you'll see now the timelines associated with all these and the colors match up. So you can get a good idea of what's happening on your line from, in this case, the efficiency standpoint. Um, but you can break, you can kind of drill into any of these particular categories. You know, these dashboards are live, although it's turned off right now, but you can make these live. So this could go on a marquee or a bingo board in your plant so that everyone can kind of see, you know, where they're at um, uh, from a production standpoint. Uh, go back to the PowerPoint here. I believe the next one will show. That gives you kind of a high level summary, but you can go into the individual events such as downtime. And if I go ahead and drill in here. I go to the downtime application and you'll notice that I have a lot of applications here on the left hand side. This can be pared down based upon login so that as you're you log into the system, you're not going to necessarily see, you know, all of these particular apps, but ones that are relevant to you as the operator, as the quality person, as the maintenance person. So here's what I'm seeing from a downtime perspective. Complete tells me that I've. Uh, I've gotten all the information I need from the diagnostics to fill out the tree completely. Active tells me that I've got, I, I know the machine went down, but I don't exactly know why. And I need the operators to kind of fill that in. Um, to go back to what uh, Lulu was saying, I think a powerful thing with these applications is they do, we kind of think of them tablet first. So you really want to start thinking about taking advantage of the tablets themselves. So much like on the auto log screen we showed in the PowerPoint, we have comments here that I can go ahead and add to that. And then if I go ahead and let's say add a comment, as Lulu mentioned, I can go ahead and click the picture icon. I turn my camera off. Yes, go ahead, the app can low the camera. And now you'll see me as where I saw earlier, which I can now take a picture of myself or take a picture of the problem in this particular case. And then you, there'll actually be a small editing toolbar here as well. So you can go ahead and draw on there, add text, um, so you can help identify what those issues are. This is a powerful way of kind of proving when, you know, there's doubt as to what happened with a particular product or why a thing went down. You can take pictures and identify, look, here is the exact <laughs> image of what I saw when the machine went down. So it's a powerful tool to help you with downtime. The same kind of capability there exists with waste, except in this case, instead of a duration, you're going to have an amount. And then we do have... While we have the live dashboard there, we've also got reports that you can access as well. So if I go back to the demo system, I'll go into my reporting. And this allows you to start to summarize your data by all different kind of uh, different dimensions that you might want to look at. The first one you'll see is by particular products. So this happens to be a paint demo. Here are all the different products, and I can see my OE breakdown by those individual products. You can do this by very other ways. So you can look at orders. Production status is a nice one to look at because if I look at, let's say, status and I look at it by crew, 
this will kind of tell you where you are in your current order. So it looks like everything's done, except Lulu is still finishing up this particular order. She'll probably get that done by the end of the seminar here. Um, but you'll see here, this gives you the ability to kind of break this down by different dimensions. So powerful reporting tools right out of the box. Um, any questions on the uh, efficiency module? If not, I'll quickly kind of cover uh, traceability and genealogy. Again, this has been a strength of our software really since you know almost the introduction of the software itself. And we've used this in many applications to mitigate you know, FDA, EPA violations to kind of prove where a particular product uh, flowed through the process. So you can do this, again, as much automatically as possible. Here we're showing particular screens where you can do this through uh, the interface as well which includes, as I mentioned, the camera icon there, you have this camera icon to go ahead and scan particular uh, crates or totes or whatever you might be using in the product to consume it and take the advantage of the genealogy screen there. Um, we do have a genealogy screen out of the box, although many customers you know, tend to customize it for the reports that they want, but certainly to demonstrate that capability, here is the genealogy screen where you can go ahead and search uh, again, based upon an ID, a serial number, or you can actually just use the camera icon. Again, scan that in, and I want to see all the serial lots associated with it. It does remember the last few lots that I selected. So if I go ahead and pick here, I'll pick the graph. And in this case, I can see all the consumption we've had here. And then if this had any outputs, maybe this was a semi-finished good and was putting, being put out, I would be able to see the outputs there as well. Powerful thing with the genealogy that I mentioned in the beginning is, let's say, we identify a raw material lot as you know bad or quality or suspect. We can then now put everything that consumed that particular lot on hold so that as it goes to the next part of the process, it'll be stopped until we resolve this hold. And I think you saw in Lulu's PowerPoint, the nonconformance module allows us to kind of track how we resolve that particular hold in that case. I think that's all the content that we had prepared.